Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Art, you and I are pleased to present once again the lovely Michelle Fabrega, our yeah. <laughs> favorite Celebrating Act 2 love and relationship coach. Yeah, one of our favorite people altogether. Oh, shucks. Thank you. <laughs> I wonder if we could um, uh, explore today something that happens uh, uh, as people get older. Uh, they uh, maybe unfortunately lose uh, uh, a partner uh, to death uh, or uh, a breakup. And uh, especially when you're in your act two, uh, 50 plus, uh, it, you probably or may not have been out in the field for a while and uh, had to start dating again. Can you help guide through uh, the process of uh, somebody who's older, more experienced, first getting back into the dating scene uh, after a loss of uh, a loved one? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, because I, what I want to really talk about today is more the emotional readiness of a person, like how to know when you're ready and, um, and other things around that. So like, how do you know? And I would say, you know, you know, when you know, and what I mean by that is maybe you feel an eagerness or an interest in connecting with someone new and there's no right or wrong way or timing around this. I mean, I've known people who've waited years. I've known people who've waited a few weeks and it might seem like, you know, wow, a few weeks, that's not very long. And I, I know I, clients who basically have chosen to start dating even when their partner is still alive, but essentially unavailable, you know, through you know, illness, you know, in a facility, let's say living apart, you know, and has dementia or something like that. So there's really no way to know, like what I'm trying to say is there's no right or wrong answer here. It's really up to you and feeling into it. So one of the things that I would say it can be too soon is if you're feeling very sad and lonely and almost like desperate for, you know, maybe a hug or contact or something like that, you know, that's not the, the situation to, to go to a bar and, and pick someone up because you're, you're not, you're really putting yourself at risk for a uh, possibly really unpleasant or dangerous situation. So, I mean, just want to put that out there first to start goes without saying, but I'm saying. <laughs> so do you always do you, when, when you, let me put it this way. I, there must be different signs to tell you when you're ready to start dating again after a loss. I mean, they might be signs that are outward. I'll call them outward that you're attracted to somebody. Or they might be signs that are inward. It's like I'm desperately lonely. Uh, but we don't always recognize those signs, do we? That's true. That's true. Yeah. And sometimes you won't know until you get out there. And so that's kind of what I think. I think it's kind of wise to sort of approach it as like dating light, <laughs> where you're just sort of like you know maybe dipping a toe in the water. Maybe you're going, maybe you go out with, the, I mean, obviously, you know, we're in COVID right now, but, you know, people are going to start being, getting out or even online, maybe going to group gatherings and maybe gathering together with singles and just get a feel for what it, what it feels like to be out talking to people on your own. Maybe you haven't been out much recently or you haven't socialized alone in a really long time. So it's kind of just, you know, getting, you know, getting your toe wet, like I said, and, and getting a sense of what it's like. And, you know, um, hanging out with some single friends, what they're up to, get a feel for that. Um, you know, sometimes you don't know until you actually get started. So like one woman I, I spoke with, she, you know, started to cry when she first kissed a new person. And at that moment it was like, okay, am I ready? Am I not? And, and kind of the way her date responded made a difference for her. He was a little bit like, oh, wow, it's been such a long time. And kind of, and she took it as implying that, you know, you're not over him yet. And, and I don't even know if he meant it that way, but what she heard was this sort of judgment and it didn't make her feel comfortable with him. So she kind of concluded, well, this isn't the right timing right now for me. 
And she realized later that if it had been something like if he had said, oh, you know, I, I get it here. Well, let's just I can just hold you if you're feeling sad and I get it and allow her emotions to come up. You know, emotions are going to come up when you do something new with someone different for the first time, especially you've been in a really long term relationship. So that's kind of just be gentle with yourself and kind of maybe take little experiments into getting out there or speaking with someone. Yeah. But it seems to me also that um, another part of it is that uh, if somebody's sticking the tone, as you say, uh, uh, maybe determining, well, maybe I'm ready, maybe I'm not. Uh, when uh, we're all younger and we're in our uh, teens and early 20s, uh, we may be in school or uh, a religious institution or some other gathering of young people who are mostly unattached. Uh, or, so that's sort of like a... Uh, a pond of available people who don't theoretically have much baggage. But when you're in your 50s already or 60s, uh, you've probably been in long-term relationships. There is, if you will, uh, some histories that both you and the other person had that far exceed anything that um, uh, some uh, younger people might have. Uh, how would you suggest particularly, although I know that we're all getting vaccinated and we're getting uh, you know, hopefully this, by the end of the year, uh, things will be somewhat back to normal. Uh, the whole scene of getting to meet people is different these days. Uh, uh, how do you see people navigating that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm really a, a big fan of, of group activities that way because I think that it, you know, the one-on-one -on -one dating thing, you know, can be great. A lot of people are doing that too, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But it's when you can get together in a you know, small group uh, to do things together. There's a lot of things on meetup.com. You can put in your interests and find activities that are, you know, hiking and, and, and whatnot, um, you know, different book clubs, things like that, things that really are interesting to you that you would enjoy doing anyway. And then you're out with other people and, um, you know, some of these may or may not be singles things, obviously, but um, sometimes there are singles, you know, groups of singles getting together. And there's another great community online called stitch.net. And um, I'm a member of that group as well. And they have a lot of all night activities. It's basically for people in their 50s and up. So that would be another community to uh, explore and just, you know, basically experiencing yourself as a solo person again is new and you get to kind of like spread stretch your wings a bit and see what that feels like and you know see who you're drawn to maybe make some friends to you know who you don't want to maybe date but you want to hang out with and then maybe you meet people together so it can be in a kind of more i guess um you know not so directed way like oh i'm gonna go and get start dating i mean that that's one way to do it too but there can also be a way to kind of like ease into it by being more social and doing more activities. I, I think you make uh, some good points, Michelle, because after all, when, when you lose somebody that you've been intimate with, you lose a partner or a spouse, um, it's easy to be isolated. It's easy to isolate yourself. Um, yeah. And I, I think that might be part of, although I'm not sure, part of the process of mourning, you know, that, that isolation. But um, it, it, as you point out, it's important not to isolate yourself mm -hmm. and to get out and meet people, even if it's not necessarily for looking for another relationship, a, a dating. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there are even groups for like widows and widowers, you know, to get together with. I mean, that to me seems like a match made in heaven, <laughs> you know, in yeah. some situations, because you've been through something and you know that there's a person in their life that's been very meaningful to them, you know, in many situations. And I mean, you know, my partner, Dave, is, um, he's a widower. He was married for 34 years. And of course, that's part of our relationship. They have a, a child together and a grown son now. And so it's like, that's just part of the landscape is that she's part of his world too. I mean, she, they had a huge, long experience together. Of course, I want to honor that as he's also with me now and, you know, very much, we're very much in love with each other and he has history i have history too right so to kind of just um to welcome that and to appreciate that really because that's how we've formed you know how we've been formed as, as human beings is through our relationships and our contact with other people all good all good points all very useful advice thank you yeah um 
I guess one quick thing I want to add is like, you know, what about grown kids? Like, do they need to know what, what we're up good, to? That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and, you know, I would say it's to, it depends on your relationship with your, with your children, with your adult children, or maybe your children are still young, whatever. But do you need their permission or blessing? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, you don't want them but, to start saying, but remember, go have a good time, but you better be home at 10 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and obviously your kids might be concerned for you. And, and so this is a beautiful thing that they're, they're worried about their, you know, mom or their dad. And, and that's cool. So, but, you know, it's when you're ready to share or obviously, if, you know, if you're living near each other, they might find out, whatever. But, you know, you don't need their blessing. And um, they might be angry. They might not be ready. And um, they get to have their experience and you get to be supportive of that and they get to accept what you're doing. So, you know, it's just a place to to discover together. Well, thank you again, Michelle, for another great explanation of things that are important to all of us that are not easy to discuss without a love and relationship coach uh, such as you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.